Good afternoon. My name is Lise Pelte. I'm director of the Acadian Archives at the University of Maine in Fort Kent. And I'm here to talk about Acadians of northern Maine and more specifically of the St. John Valley. Acadians got their name from a piece of land that was discovered in the New World by an Italian explorer named Giovanni de Varazzano. He named it Arcadia. Thereafter, uh, 50 or 75 years later, the R was dropped and the name Acadia stuck. Acadians settled first in 1604 on St. Croix Island, which today is between New Brunswick and Maine. They then moved to the area of, that we find here, that is Nova Scotia, and the uh, southern part of the province of today, New Brunswick. Now, all around here is the Bay of Fundy, or La Baie Française, as it was called then. Acadians prospered very well uh, from 16, 1630s until 1755. What we see here is a depiction of the Royal Proclamation, which was read to Acadians on July 28, 1755, whereby the British authorities announced that the Acadians would be removed from their province, uh, from Acadia, and dispersed to the American British colonies to the south. Everything they owned would be uh, taken away from them, their houses burned, etc., etc. Uh, this is a, a drawing of uh, one of the villages that was plundered um, and burned as the Acadians were boarded into ships. It was ethnic cleansing. And British feared that Acadians would, when they reconnected, would recreate their culture. And so before they were shipped off, families and community members were separated into different ships each ship had a different destination. This is where Acadians landed. Of the 18,000 population in 1755, about half of Acadians died. After 1763, with the Treaty of Paris, when England and France um, uh, ended their war, France ceded all of its territories to England. Acadians asked permission to come back to Acadia. Once they did come back, they saw that their lands in Nova Scotia were now uh, controlled and inhabited by New England planters. And so they moved further north to southwestern New Brunswick. Now, this map is interesting because it, it really uh, highlights the importance of the waterways. Here we have the Atlantic Ocean, and we're moving into the Gulf of St. Lawrence, right over here. So we're now in Quebec. But we also have the St. John River. The St. John River flows, it actually flows north along the Canada-US border and then south down to the Bay of Fundy. This, I'm going to show you this map again. So this is the area that we're talking about, that we're um, interested in, the Madawaska Territory. Why was it interesting for Acadians? Well, there were three reasons. There were religious reasons, there were economic reasons, and there were family reasons. The Acadians settled in southern New Brunswick, although it was not a province yet, could not get deeds to their lands. Very few had deeds to their lands. Catholics, you remember, could not own property. And so although it had been promised to them, um, it just was not materializing. Another big factor was that after the end of the Revolutionary War in the United States, loyalists, 30,000 loyalists, came to Canada, and 12,000 of them settled um, on the shores of the St. John River. So all of a sudden, uh, the Acadians were surrounded by English Protestant. Um, it became very apparent that it would be almost impossible for them to get a parish priest, a Catholic priest. Also, since the lands were now given 
to the, uh, the new arrivals, uh, it meant that their trapping and their hunting forests were depleted. And because the Acadians did not own the property to the lands they were living on, they could not transmit those lands to uh, their, their sons or daughters. So they're looking at the Madawaska Territory. This is a blow up of the Madawaska Territory. If you look at this map, you'll see that this little panhandle, the Madawaska Territory, is in the middle of Maine and Quebec. So from the perspective of the British, it made a lot of sense to establish good British subjects there to uh, fend off attacks by Americans, Americans who had just won a war against them. And so Acadians came to the St. John Valley, that is to the Madawaska Territory, which spread uh, westward and northward from Grand Falls to Allagash. And the St. John River flows um, right in the middle. And so the newcomers arrived with their families and settled on both sides of the St. John River. This was in 1785. Maine was not a state yet. So when we talk about migration to Maine, we kind of have to have a little caveat here. Um, open a parenthesis and say, but these people were already in the territory when Maine became a state. In fact, Maine separated from Massachusetts in 1820, and immediately there was a conflict of the boundary because the northern section of Maine was not defined. The Americans claimed all this land in the Orange Line up to Timiskwata. The British claimed the land down to Mars Hill. This is Timiskwata Highlands. The uh, border review or commissioners ended up with this boundary and it just so happens that the boundary was the St. John River. The Aroostook War or the Aroostook Bloodless War um, had the, uh, the um, well we saw the construction of forts in a lot of the areas. This is the blockhouse of Fort Kent which is still standing and which was constructed in 1839. So now we have the same map and we can look at it with different eyes because the entire northern shore of the St. John River is now in British territory. That is in the province of New Brunswick and Quebec. And the southern section of the river is now in, in Maine. How did that affect, how did that affect Acadians living in the area? At first, um, we have to remember that the families were spread on both sides of the St. John River. My grandmother was born in St. Francis um, in the 1880s, and this was before there were uh, boundaries, before there were uh, bridges and custom houses, etc. And as everybody else used to say, you wanted something, you just went to the other side. You jumped in your canoe and went to the other side. This expression, the other side, implies that the entire territory is seen as their home. And whether it's on one side or the other side, you're actually talking about one piece of land. And this is the way they saw it, either um, from the Canadian perspective or the American perspective. As far as individuals are concerned and families concerned, uh, life went on as usual. Of course, in 1878, um, this was not as, as uh, pleasant or fluid as it sounds. Uh, there was a, a big push to Americanize and Anglicize uh, the people of the St. John Valley because we're talking about a population that was almost 100% French and Catholic. After the Acadians came, uh, their families and friends from the lower St. Lawrence area, that is French Canadians or Quebecois, came to the area and settled there as well. And this resulted in the construction of the Madawaska Training School, 
uh, whose mission was to train bilingual teachers who would teach the French children to speak and write and communicate in English. What has happened since then? Of course, we know that the boundaries, um, the crossings are not what they used to be. Um, my father was a customs officer in Clare, New Brunswick, on the other side of Fort Kent, Maine, um, his entire life. And his best buddies were customs officers from the Fort Kent side on the other side of the bridge. And we crossed every day, and they knew us by name and asked, how's your mom, Scotty? How's your dad, Lionel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it was extremely fluid, so I'm talking, you know, in 1970s, 1980s, and of course, September 11th came around. Um, now we need a passport, and we're asked to remove our glasses, asked to remove our hat, and we're, when they do this, they say, could you, please, could you please remove your eyeglasses so I can ascertain that this picture of, in your passport is really of you, because there are people watching me. There are efforts to maintain the culture. Uh, we can hear French very much in the St. John Valley, but it's spoken among people who are 40 years old and older. Um, it does not, it, it, is, it is not part of the elementary schools anymore, unfortunately. There is no um, curriculum for French. French is taught as a foreign language in high schools. There are organizations um, whose mission it is to protect um, the Acadian culture. One of them is the Acadian Archives, uh, where we have a bilingual language policy, um, and we disseminate history, we disseminate education about the culture, and encourage activities that transmit the culture. There is also an organization called the Maine Acadian Heritage Council, of which I'm a part. Um, and there's also a group of people from the region, the hosting region of the Acadian World Congress, which was just celebrated in August 2014. We call this new territory Acadia of the Lands and Forests, but really when you look at it closely, you're talking about the Madawaska Territory of 1785. And having worked with um, people from Timiskwada and New Brunswick, on the uh, organization of the, the Acadian World Congress for six years. I can tell you that when we met, without knowing each other, we recognized, we recognized each other. We're the same. And um, hopefully that will continue. And with the help of our French-speaking uh, friends from New Brunswick and Quebec, our culture will continue to flourish. Thank you very much.